Today we are going to convert your boring screenshots into this elegant UI animation using After Effects. It's very easy to create and you can use it in your portfolios, explainer videos or wherever you want. So let's see how to make this. Alright, so I have an After Effects and in order to create this animation, we are going to use a couple of these screenshots. These are just screenshots of some websites that I am going to use. It's completely up to you, you can use whatever screenshots you have. So first we are going to create a new composition. Let's call this one main width and height will be 19, 20 by 10, 80 frame by 30 fps and duration you can make whatever you want. Just click on OK. Now we are going to create one more composition. So first I'm going to call this one media one and just click on OK. Now we are going to create another composition for our window. So let's call this one window one. Rest of things will remain same. Just click on OK. Now inside the media one, we can just simply select whatever screenshot we want to bring in. So let's bring this one. Now we can go to the windows one and we can bring this media inside this. Once you have your screenshot, we are ready to start creating some windows. So for that, I'm going to use this rounded rectangle tool. So make sure none of the layer is selected and then just simply double click on this. Now it will create this and let's just make the fill white stroke. We can set this to zero. Now we can select this. Let's search for size. And I'm going to like quickly lower it down to something like that. This looks good. Also, let's search for roundness. Then just simply increase this value. It's completely up to you can find whatever looks good to you. And this looks good to me. Perfect. Once we have this, we want our screenshot to be visible through this window. So for that, we can select this. And let's just simply change its track map to this layer. Now, in case you are not able to see the pick whip for track map, then you are either using the older versions, then you can just simply update it. And now we can select the screenshot and let's just quickly scale it down so that it is visible inside this. Something like that. This looks good to be. So once we have this, we are ready to add some really nice stroke. So for that, we can select this. Let's press Ctrl D on this one. Let's enable it. Let's disable the fill onto this and just enable the stroke. Let's set this to eight for now. We're going to change it anyways. Let's go under the content rectangle and the stroke. Let's enable the taper and I'm going to increase the end length to 100. There you go. Now we can make this rounded by simply going inside the line cap. Just change this to rounded. Now let's add trim path. And after that, let's open it up. Now we can lower down its end value so that the edge is like somewhere around here. It's completely up to you. You can like make it however big you want. If you want to have like small trail, then you can just lower this value a lot down. But I want it to have like somewhere around here. And yeah, this looks good to me. Now in order to animate this, we can use the offset keyframe. So here you can see now we have this. Now let's add a keyframe for this. Let's move like somewhere around here and just increase its value so that it is moving clockwise direction. Now if I press play, you can see we have this line moving around across our window. Now we can apply four color gradient to add some really nice colors. Let's search for gradient. Let's drag it onto this and it's completely up to you can change the colors to whatever you want. I'm going to just change the screen to this and I think this color looks good to me. So we are done with this. Now our next step is to add some glow to this. So let's search for glow and let's just drag it onto this layer. So first I'm going to change its blending mode to add. Let's change a couple of these glow values. So first I'm going to change the threshold to something like 44 and the radius I'm going to set this to 95 and the glow intensity let's set this to 0.1 that we have this very subtle glow. Now I'm going to press Ctrl D to duplicate this. All the settings are going to remain the same. We are only going to increase the radius. So let's set this to something around 280. Let's select this press Ctrl D and this one we can set it to something like 800 let's duplicate it once again and i'm going to set this one to 1000 so here you can see we have this very nice glow now i think the outline is very thick so we can just lower it down to something like that yeah now the outline is looking nice maybe a little bit more perfect now we can select this press ctrl d to duplicate this and on top of this one we are going to remove the color and let's just select all the glows and I'm going to delete them as well because we are going to change it. And first I'm going to lower down its size. So for this one, we can only just set this to like 1.7 so that we have this very thin line. 
Now let's play with this setting. So for the threshold, I'm going to set this to 65. Radius, I'm going to set this to 20. And glow intensity, let's set this to 0.2. Now let's select this, press Ctrl D. Over there, let's set this to 60. Let's press Ctrl D. And let's set this to 180. And now we can select this, press Ctrl D. And at last, let's set this to 540. There you go. Now we have added this really nice glow outside our frame. And both of these are already animated. Once we have this, we also want a little bit of outline across this. So for that, we can just simply select this, press Ctrl D. Let's move it to the top. Let's enable it and let's set this to add. And also fill, we can set this to none. We only need stroke. And for the stroke, I'm going to just set this to somewhere around two. So that we have this very thin outline. Maybe two is too much. So we can set this to one. Perfect. So here you can see we have this very nice outline and we are basically done with our first window. So before we continue, if you enjoy my work and you want to support me, then you can check out my Patreon page. Over there you will get access to the tutorial project files, exclusive templates and all the other advanced VFX and CGI tutorials that are available only on Patreon. So make sure to check them out. Link for that is in the description. Now let's continue. Now we don't have to recreate this again and again. We are only going to reuse these assets. So first I'm going to select the media one. Let's press Ctrl D and let's press like five times so that we have five medias let's open media 2 and we are going to replace this so for that you can select this layer hold on the alt key then just simply select the layer with which you want to replace it and just drag it onto this now it will change the screenshot let's do the same thing in media 3 as well so let's select this hold on the alt key let's drag it let's do the same thing in media 4 now we have changed all of these medias. Now our next step is to change this in the windows. So we have window one. Let's duplicate it like five times. Let's open the window two. And over here, we are only going to change the media one folder with the media two. So hold on the alt key, just replace it. There you go. Also, while we are still inside this comp, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these two values and we are going to like have little bit of variation in the offset. So I'm going to like just increase it so that it is not the same we have like a little bit of different animation now let's do the same thing in window 3 so window 3 we can replace it with media 3 and again let's select these two layers press u and select all the keyframes and let's just simply add a little bit of offset also we can have a little bit of delay in these keyframes so that we have more variations window 4 let's select media 4 make sure that this is selected alt drag it let's select them there you go now we have changed all of these medias and windows now we can close everything up now our next step is to import everything inside this main composition so first we need a background so right click let's add a solid and this one we can just search for gradient to make it really nice let's drag it over here and for the green for the this we can make it like dark and for the green we can make it dark as well now let's move around these colors there you go now we have this very nice background and we are ready to add our windows so let's select everything let's drag it inside this composition now i'm going to make all these layers 3d except the background so let's select everything let's make them 3d now we can add a camera as well so right click new let's add a camera and for this one i'm using this two node setup and also 36 mm just click on ok now let's create a controller for all these layers let's add a null object make it 3d as well i'm going to place it down below Let's select all of these windows and just parent them to this null. Now we can select this camera and in order to animate this, we are going to use this orbit around and let's select the first window. So you can just simply click and drag in the middle so that we have this very nice angle. Once you have this, we are ready to offset all of these windows. So let's select this, press P. Now we can offset all of these screenshots in the Z space. So for that, let's select the window two, and I'm going to set the Z value to 1000. Window 3, we can set this to 2000. And again, this will be 3. And this one will be 4. Now, in order to animate them, we can use this null. Let's press P. Let's add a keyframe for position. And what we are going to do is, I'm going to like move it far away so that this is completely out of our frame. And after that, we can move somewhere around, let's say, 2 seconds. And I'm going to set this to 0 so that it is right at this point. Now let's move to 4 seconds and I'm going to change this value to negative 1000 so that we have this other screenshot. Let's move to 6 seconds 
and let's change its value to negative 2000 so that we have this one let's go through the next one and again let's set this to 3000 and at last we can go to this 10 seconds and let's set this to negative 4000 and after that we can go to somewhere around 12 and we can just move it like out of our frame now we can select all of these keyframes press f9 let's just select the first two and we are going to change its easing now if your graph looks different then make sure you're using the speed graph not the value graph now i'm going to select this point and just move it over here for rest of these keyframes we can just simply change the curve to look something like that now if i press play you can see we have this very smooth motion and after that we have these changing screenshots one after other now in order to improve this more we can have little bit of depth of field so for that we can select this camera let's press aa let's enable the depth of field and after that we can increase the aperture amount so if i increase this you can see it will make everything blurry except the things that are inside the inside our focus area and maybe this is too much we can like decrease this out now you can play around with the focus as well if you want to like have this area in focus then you can lower down the focus distance something like this now if you want to have the far away things in focus then you can increase this but for this example i'm going to like leave it somewhere in the middle which is over here and maybe we can lower down the aperture so that it is not that harsh now we can add keyframe for focus distance let's go to this point and again you can choose where it, wherever you want to have this focus so for example if you want to have focus somewhere around here then you can lower it down otherwise you can just leave it over here so in this way you can play around with the focus distance to keep all of those things which you want in focus so we are pretty much done with this now if you want to have a little bit of camera motion as well then what we can do is we can select this and let's open the transform properties let's add keyframe for point of interest and position now we can go to this point so or maybe we can go to the ending point so which is somewhere around here now at this point let's select the window 5 and make sure that this camera selection movement tool is selected just simply click and you can orbit around to a really nice angle i think this looks good now let's go to this window which is the first one let's select this and just click and just move it to a different location so that we have this nice angle now we can move these keyframes like at the end like that now we can select them if you want you can easy ease them as well now at last if i press play you can see we have this very beautiful animated ui with all of these moving lines and very nice depth of field so this is how you can convert your boring screenshots into this very elegant ui animation now if you want to get the project files then they are available on patreon so if you're supporting me over there then you can download it from there and if you're not then you might consider it because you will get access to the tutorial project files and exclusive templates that are available only on patreon so make sure to check them out link for that is in the description and with that being said my name is abhishek and i'll see you in the next one